possible etiology we're going to talk about for recurrent pregnancy loss is the endocrine etiology or endocrine system. And while this can be a very broad category, the main ones we're thinking about for recurrent pregnancy loss are thyroid issues, typically hypothyroidism, so an increased TSH on lab testing. We think about diabetes, certainly poorly controlled diabetics with increased sugars and increased uh, insulin have poor outcomes and higher chance of miscarriage. And then we think of, along the same lines, PCOS, polycystic, polycystic ovary syndrome, which can be very common or can be very uh, similar to diabetes in that PCOS can have pre-diabetic uh, symptoms or even frank diabetes itself. And then lastly, which is not as commonly looked at, is something called celiac sprue um, in terms of um, the digestive tract. Obviously, in terms of diagnosis, you're going to get the, the appropriate lab test for each of these. And then treatment-wise, for thyroid, obviously you're going to correct the thyroid with uh, thyroid medicine. Um, with the diabetes, diabetes you're going to use insulin sensitizing agents or even um, insulin itself to obviously correct um, the blood sugars and decrease the insulin uh, resistance. That would be the same thing with PCOS, quite frankly, because you, you're going to have typically a higher level of insulin in PCOS. With celiac sprue, you can use gluten-free diets uh, for them, and they may not only see their symptoms of uh, bowel problems uh, correct, but they may also have improvement uh, in terms of their uh, pregnancy history. Another quick etiology that we talk about, and we get this on our history and physical in terms of looking at folks who've had recurrent pregnancy loss, certainly lifestyle um, can affect uh, obtaining and maintaining a pregnancy. And what I typically mean by that, you will ask about smoking because tobacco abuse can certainly lead to poor quality eggs, poor ovulation, poor implantation, and a host of other things, which can obviously lead to recurrent pregnancy loss. And then also you ask about alcohol. Um, or alcohol use and alcohol abuse as this, um, similar to smoking, can cause um, decreased pregnancy rates or increased recurrent pregnancy loss. Obviously, the, it's not an easy fix. It's um, certainly not easy to tell someone to stop smoking or stop drinking, but if they can decrease it um, to some sort of moderation, they may see an overall benefit not only in their health, but also um, a decrease in the chance for uh, recurrent pregnancy loss. Another possible etiology, which quite honestly has fallen out of fashion, but I'll mention it here, is infectious. Um, and what I mean by that is toxoplasmosis, sometimes rubella, CMV or cytomegalovirus, HSV, or more commonly, which has been looked at, um, is listeria. And a lot of these we're talking about in the uterus itself or affecting the embryos themselves as well. Um, however, I can tell you that ACOG, the governing body of OBGYN, does not recommend uh, universal screening uh, for these, and therefore that's why I say they've fallen out of fashion. And quite honestly, it's a very low percentage um, of the time to maybe um, uh, as high as 5%, but usually it's in the lower percent as a cause for recurrent pregnancy loss, and therefore that's why uh, there's no screening, um, universal screening recommended. Another one that has fallen out of favor for early uh, recurrent pregnancy loss, so first trimester losses, are the thrombophilias. A few years ago, it was very common to test folks who have had recurrent pregnancy loss for their thrombophilias, and you may see this still tested today, but the ones that they were talking about are the factor V Leiden, either homozygous or heterozygous, um, prothrombin uh, gene mutation, or prothrombin gene, antithrombin 3 issues, um, MTHFR, which is methyl excuse me, methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase enzyme um, with folic acid metabolism. Um, and that can lead to homocysteine levels that are abnormal. And finally, sometimes folks will t uh, throw in protein C and S in here as well. Now again, these the thrombophilia panel has fallen out of favor for early recurrent pregnancy loss. However, I will say that if you have uh, second trimester pregnancy losses, these will probably be looked at at that point.
but when you have first trimester pregnancy losses, which are the more common, um, these have kind of fallen out of favor. Finally, another possible etiology um, is what's something called luteal phase defect or deficiency. So the, you'll remember the luteal phase is the latter half of the menstrual cycle when there's supposed to be an increase in progesterone from the ovary after ovulation. Now obviously if there's a decrease in progesterone or um, an abnormal corpus luteum that's secreting the progesterone, um, you can possibly theorize that implantation will not take effect as well because progesterone is the driving hormone for the pregnancy and for good implantation. That's where it gets its name, pro for gest, for pregnancy, progesterone. A lot has been looked at in terms of LPD and um, while it's very difficult to definitively diagnose it, this is more of a, th a theoretical problem. And quite honestly, the main way to do this is using empiric um, progesterone supplementa supplementation to try to uh, help I increase and sustain the progesterone level uh, to help um, proper implantation in the uterine lining in that way. Finally, last but not least, Unfortunately, a, a vast proportion or almost even majority of patients, even after all that testing that we just um, went through, will fall into the unexplained category, which can be 40 to even 50 percent or more of the patients. The main issue I tell my patients with uh, recurrent pregnancy loss is even after we do all the testing, let's say you have all normal tests, um, there is... Um, still a very good likelihood that you're going to have a very normal pregnancy. Um, point, the best medicine is going to be reassurance because again I just told you that the vast majority of folks with two pregnancy losses are still going to have a normal pregnancy if they continue to try. Now in addition to the reassurance um, oftentimes patients will um, try to again optimize uh, their um, obtaining and maintaining the pregnancy and with that we can try some medicines to help them ovulate well which is called empiric ovulation induction with some medicines and then like I just mentioned in the previous um, possible etiology with luteal phase defect we can give them progesterone in the latter half of the, of the menstrual cycle to try to help that implantation a little bit better and so when I say empiric it means we're giving this again to try to optimize even though we really have no true meaning uh, for their recurrent pregnancy loss um, and therefore they fall into the unexplained category. So I think we've gone through the main issues with recurrent pregnancy loss um, in terms of the different categories that you look at and look for and then also their treatments. Um, the very last uh, slide after um, uh, at the end of this talk will be a, a good pie chart as a reference that goes through the common etiologies that I've just gone through and their percentages.